So this video is one of the videos that is part of our Nomad Garden, which is a course that teaches you how to make small environments, so little gardens and little dioramas and scenes. And this particular video focuses on how to take a texture uh, in the form of an image and then place it on your models in Nomad School. So let's take a look at this one single chapter from the course. And if you're interested in the course, obviously there's details down below in the description. Now, if you don't think your painting skills are up to it, you might want to use textures. So I'm going to take one of the rose leaves here and I'm just going to do solo. So all we're seeing is the leaf. And if we like the leaf shape, but the texture isn't up to standard, we can go and get a texture and do it um, a, a lot more accurately. So this is only relatively low resolution at the minute. So it's, it's 24,000 uh, polygons. So if you think you need more resolution, then just use multi-res and go up and subdivide it. So I'll, I'll go really high here so we can get a really nice texture. So leaf shape we're okay with. What about texture? So let's switch over to Procreate and open up uh, a JPEG. So we've... We've just jumped online and we've just found some um, free usage. Um, so look for look for things in here under tools, look for Creative Commons license. So you want things you can use for free. We've picked a nice um, uh, picture of a rose uh, leaf, switch to Procreate. Now I use Procreate, but if you want a free similar program, you've got things like Ibis Paint or Ibis Paint X, and they're, they're pretty much functionally exactly the same and completely free on your iPad. Now with this one, you've got one layer in the background, so we'll turn the background off. Now this happens to have come with a transparent background, so that's really, really useful. If it hasn't, then you probably need to delete out the background, so you can either, you can select it out uh, using these tools here, or you can just do it manually and just paint it out. So we're just gonna paint the rest of this flower, this leaf that we don't want out. And we don't even need the petiole there either. So we'll get rid of those and we'll scale it up so it fills the size of the, the image here. Now, what we don't wanna do is we don't know where the edge of it comes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill the background. An easy way to do that is duplicate the, the leaf and then scale up the one behind, something like that. It's a technique we use in game quite a lot where you just want to have a similar color around the edge uh, and we can blur that a little bit. So you can go Gaussian blur and just blur that a bit to make it a bit more indistinct. And that will probably do. We don't even need to paint on the leaf or anything like that. It's, it's, a, it's a good starter for 10. Now save that as a JPEG. You don't need to save it as anything better than that. So we want to go to share JPEG and I'll just save it in my... Um, photo library. I'm going to switch back to Nomad. Now in Nomad, we, you can come either up here and do it here, or you can do it down here and do it down below once you've switched to paint mode. You won't see it until you're in paint mode. That's why some people get confused with that. Hit the plus sign, photos, and we'll just bring that texture in like so. Now we've got that texture, we can just drag it onto our, our leaf. So how do we do that? So we go, make sure our fall off is custom and it fully fills the cube there. That's one thing to do. And also grab dynamic radius is on. That means we can now pull out the texture. Now it looks really dark to me. So you can see it is working, but it's very, very dark. So why is that? Because the color actually matters. So you need to switch that all the way to white and then you'll see that it comes out almost perfectly like so. So let me do it again. It, didn't, it, it does actually matter where you pull it from. So I'm moving around to see where the center is to get it roughly centralized and roughly come into the edges where I want it. And there you go. So when you pull that out now, there is, there is um, it looks a bit odd because there was some lighting, what we call baked into this, but that won't matter as much once you start moving things around. So you'll see what I mean. As soon as I start playing with the size and the intensity, you'll see that that breaks that quite poor illusion there. And you won't have a problem with that. Um, now, you, you can improve that. Um, when, when I say bake line, let me try and explain that a little bit better. So can you see this shadow line here, which is on the side of the... This is where the leaf rolls around this way. And there's a shadow here because the light's coming from this side in the picture. 
but we haven't got that we've got a flat leaf so you can see there we've got a picture of shadow without having anything um uh, anything to actually um be creating it in our our 3d scene so now we, we we just have to cheat a little bit there so if we use something like the crease tool and we just you know put in uh, creases and bumps and like like we did when we originally did the leaf if you adjust the geometry a little bit where the texture is you'll get it to match a lot better and then from different angles you can see straight away that started to look uh, you know a lot lot more realistic let's unsolo it and let's have a, look, have a look at what that looks like so that is much more realistic than our than our weekly painted ones so that is a way that we can go to a much higher um fidelity of texturing with very very little work um now the only thing is um and this might be a little bit techie or a bit nerdy for some people this is what's called vertex painting so it matters what the polygon count is so if you if i go back down the polygon count now let me show you we're, we're currently on quite high so just come down watch the texture as i come down come down again and you can see that the texture degrades as we go lower and that is a failing with vertex painting but that is all we've got to play with in nomad if you want to do more of that kind of stuff you need to go out to something like Blender or anything that has what's called a full UV and texture solution. So just, just bear that in mind that the, the, these files are going to be quite large while you keep them in Nomad. It's only once we go to the next stage outside of Nomad we can change that a little bit. And that's how you do a much, much um, higher fidelity bit of texturing. I hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are please give the video a thumbs up this one is a special one it's part of a course so this is just a video taken from that course and if you're interested the details are down below in the description if you're not interested or if you've already got this course then just give us a subscribe to the channel and we can let you know when we upload new content which is every week